All right, so my next uh, report would be from the location immediately before Nashville. I was um, I was driven up there about 40 miles from a female who see me hiking on the side of the road and she asked me if I needed a ride and brought me lunch. And at the time I was sitting on the side of the road on my bike sideways. I had laid my bike leaned over my hiking backpack and I was sitting on it and I just took a break to journal and I was sitting out there journaling. And she had drove by and I guess she had seen me so she went and picked up some lunch and brought me some Chick-fil-A. And I was like, oh, excited. I was like, yeah, yeah. I was Chick-fil-A or Burger King or something like that. But this lady was extremely happy to see me. She was an older lady, white hair. She said she lived with an alcoholic and like, and like she was like his caretaker. And she was telling me how like she was having troubles with her daughter and stuff. Well, she'd give me a ride 40 miles up to a truck stop because I said, oh, just give me a ride to a truck stop and I'll hitch a ride. I said, I'm going up to Nashville, but I was trying to stay out of um, the, the the city. I was going, I was going to get ready to walk through a city that was bad at nighttime. And um, so I was in Alabama and I'm doing this and she drops me off at a truck stop. <clears throat> and immediately at night, I... um met a trucker and he was like yeah i'm going up towards nashville <clears throat> he's like but i'm not leaving till the morning so you know what i'm going to um what's it called he's like you could just leave your bags here and i'll take you in the morning so i put my bags on the wheels of his truck and i was sitting outside the gas station spanging and when i say spanging i was sitting outside just sitting out there in my car heart hoping people were going to give me some money because I was, I was kind of broke. The female that drove me up there, she'd given me some cash and some gift cards that she wasn't sure if they were loaded up. I still have them and I have to check and see if there's money on them. It's been like two years now, but uh, I just got reminded of them yesterday. So every single time it comes up to tell a story, I get subliminally reminded about the story before I tell it conveniently. Well, so... I'm sitting there and an individual named Alex drives by. I don't know him at the time. And he drives by and he goes, hey man, you doing good? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm all right. And he goes to drive by and I smell weed. And I go, yo, yo, you got some weed? And he goes, yeah, man, I'm rolling a joint. He goes, you know what? Hop in the car. It's too cold out here. It was cold out. I had my car hard on. I hopped in the car. We drive up the road. And he goes, yeah, you know what? You can roll a joint, right? And I go, yeah. And he goes, okay, here, here's some weed, here's paper, roll some J, roll us up a J. And then I was telling him about myself, I was telling him I was on a hike, and I was telling him that, um, that I spin poi. Uh, poi is like balls on a string, and you spin them, and they're called flow toys, you know, and, and I don't know, it's just, hippies do it, it's, it's a cool thing to do, there's all different types of flow toys, and they're like, visual visual flow toys that look cool and they could light up and stuff if you have cool ones that light up some people catch them on fire and and spin fire i'm sure you all have seen some sort of a flow toy before well he says wow i have these friends that live down the street and she loves flow toys um and you know i don't want to really mention their names because uh they were very very good to me and I don't see any reason to mention their names. But now, so I went over there to these individuals' house. She she gifted me a cascading tiger's eye, which is a tiger's eye. It's just a specific gem that looks cool. It glares like a tiger's eye. It's for courage. Courage is what uh, the tiger's eye stands for. Um, I had uh, showed her some cool poi tricks. She had showed me her little, she had made a handmade poi. My poi was handmade too. I had made monkey fist out of a rope. And then, um, so I was showing her some tricks. She had a really cool boyfriend. Um, <clears throat> so she ends up having to leave the household. Uh, well, I left that night and the next day I got stuck in the town again. So I, I had got their numbers and I had called them up. And they came and picked me up and he picked me up in his Jeep and we went over through their house and I ended up hanging out with them for like a day or two, two days, three days. It was like three days or so. And, um, they ended up letting me get a shower 
and all sorts of stuff. I had a food stamp card and they didn't have any food in the house, so I got them some food. Um, we watched some shaman videos. We had hung out, partied, smoked some weed, you know, had some fun. And now he had an individual coming to visit him from like another city or something. Well, this individual was coming, coming up in the vehicle and he calls him, this individual, his friend calls them up and says, hey, I'm in a high speed chase right now. There's a cop chasing me and we could hear the sirens on the phone. He had it on speakerphone. He goes, dude, I'm like really close to your house. He goes, I'm up on the bluff on the mountainside here. And literally like where as soon as he said that, you could hear the cop sirens outside of his house. That's how close it was. And then you'll never, you'll, you'll never believe what happened next. Next, the vehicle, his arms get controlled and he is driven up the side of the fucking mountain and his car gets flipped. It's a white vehicle. The car gets flipped upside down. It is an African-American male named Will. Okay. And the reason I have this picture pulled up right here in front of us is for the date. You see how right underneath it says March 20th, 2020. Well, it this, this incident with the police officers where they controlled him to flip his vehicle was, um, and yes, I can acquire pictures of this because the individual I was with immediately went and took pictures of this vehicle. Well, guess what? Fucking, it's another, we caught another fucking cop fucking using these machines the wrong way. Yeah. Pretty fucked up, huh? Well, that was one of the first times that I had caught someone doing this. And yes, there's many, many other instances where police officers have made vehicles crash because they just were, because they were in high speed chases and stuff. So about two, two to three days before March 20th, when I got on this bus ride, this bus ride was the bus I had called my parents and said, Hey, I want, I need to get, a, uh, can you, can you give me $40? To get a bus to go to Nashville because I didn't feel like hiking from Fort Payne because that was my next destination and that's where Puddles was that's where I was supposed to call Puddles then and as soon as I called called Puddles he immediately picked me up in 15 minutes it was like really cool he was like almost right there already conveniently so um yeah so all this all all took place and now, now I can't get my license back out there in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, I can't get my license in Pennsylvania because Homeland Security says I have a hold on my license. Why does Homeland Security in Tennessee say I have a hold on my license? That's a little weird, isn't it? Yeah, no shit. I went and I had to pay for all my DUI classes. I immediately did them in the state of Pennsylvania. They say that you do not need to get a breathalyzer for your first year DUI, but somehow the state of Washington and the state of Tennessee, two states where I've never held a license, I have a hold on my license now. And they say that I have to get a breathalyzer installed in my car in Pennsylvania, and then they'll release everything, which is really fishy considering I don't have I don't have to do it in the state of the Commonwealth state of Pennsylvania. So why is the DMV in Pennsylvania saying that? And on top of that, it's really hard for me to buy a vehicle and then get SR22 insurance and get it insured and get a vehicle in my name if I do not have a driver's license to do it. Do you see how they like made it impossible? For me to get my license, these whoever whoever's doing this to me. That's what I'm saying here. It's like it's it's a real real fishy experience here. That's going on. Like what? Like why? Why is all this going on? You know. And so yeah. And I'm just like, I'm just thinking of all sorts of shit right now. You know, it's like, 
who are people working with the police? Are the police manipulating people like puppeteering puppets? You know, or, you know, or are there people, people outside of the police departments, like as in the mob controlling, controlling me and other people? Are, are, is the mob controlling the police or are the mob and the police working together? Or is it just a whole bunch of different parties all at once? Just gaggle fucking the system. Either way, I don't know, but I want my goddamn license back. And I want all my fucking money back for all the people who took my fucking license. And I want all my money back for the people who fucking controlled my fist to punch Michael Sutherland and put me in jail for four months in one day and release me on my fucking birthday. And the time I got a DUI, it was over April Fool's. So, and I was tormented in jail saying it was an April Fool's joke that they took my fucking license away. So is, is this, was did they actually take my license away to run an investigation somewhere else? And keep me in a placebo effect where I didn't know what was going on. Because initially, when I was being trained, I was a, I w we were doing research and development work. So we had a reset point. So I would not remember anything. Because it kept on putting me in the same simulations and we kept getting different results. And this was part of our, one of our techniques to be able to keep getting different results and get the best results so we could cancel out results that weren't good and continue on and keep getting best results. So they were able to reset my mind back to a mental standpoint where I wouldn't remember what I learned already. And this was a technique we used in research and development for some of the, the networking, the telepathic networks we were designing. We were designing video games on a telepathic network. And we were designing brain training games on, on a telepathic network to get smarter and become magicians. It was like a, a, a whole training thing we used. Another thing, too, is the kid who picked me up, he gave me that tattoo right there. It's pretty sick, huh? Yeah, I like it. But he gave me that tattoo for free. I just thought I'd throw that in there because, you know, after all the bullshit, all bullshit aside, I had a hell of a lot of fun on my hike. So that's, that was that, um, before I was in Fort Payne, I started, I ended up in Pensacola, Florida. I started, um, what's it called? When I got to Pensacola, Florida, that's a whole nother ordeal. So I'll explain that in another video.